Hello everybody, welcome to my My Hero Academia Chapter 322 Review. This chapter is titled Great Explosion Murder God Dynamite. So Bakugo. Katsuki Bakugo. <laughs> um so yeah, last thing that happened on um My Hero Academia was the second chapter of the or second real chapter of the class all coming after Deku trying to rescue him um, or bring him back to you as you can say it's three chapters if you count 319 along with it but I'm just going to go with 320 and 321 is sort of the key chapters for that to happen um, but this chapter starts off with or last chapter the last thing that happened was Ida came out and he grabbed Deku now this chapter starts off with Deku thinking I have to free myself from his grasp, but I don't have the strength left to do so. As you get a close up of Deku, Deku and Nita holding hands, <laughs> Deku sort of looking longingly, and Deku just looking longingly even more. And then Chaco says, Release! And um, Ida pulls Deku in towards him. And Ida thinks, How can I stick this landing? As he is traveling very fast in the air. And he looks down and he sees Kirishima. And Kirishima is just running like, Hey, over here, over here! And then he... Then, um, Hagakure is like, Whoa, are you okay? As Ida comes crashing into him. And, um, Kirishima just holds his arms out, catches both of them. He's like, I won't break. And uh, Kirishima then says, Midoriya, a while back, this one story threw me for a loop. Some kid might... Some kid my age dashed into danger to save a pal. That had to be you, right? It didn't have squat to do special powers or anything. What you did back then, the same sort of action were taken for you right now. Then Ida says, Stellar positioning on your part, Kirishima. And Kirishima's just like, ah, I just happened to be there falling in Denver's warriors, dude. And I just love this part of the chapter. Because it's just Kirishima being like, Hey, I worked out good. I wanted to help this whole operation, and I did. And I mean to? No. But it happened. <laughs> um, and then um, Ashido comes over, and she's like, Midoriya, I can't stand the thought of losing anyone else, okay? So won't you stick with us? you got to attend classes and stuff. And Deku sort of looks up a bit, and Kirishima's like, Whoa there, Midoriya! And... Deku says, I'd like that, but I'm too scared for all the people at UA. I don't want to make trouble for anyone else. Things just can't go back to how they were, not how they used to be. And then Bakugo walks up. He says, hey, remember what I said when Shigaraki made Swiss cheese out of me? And Deku says, no, I don't. And Bakugo says, so stop trying to win this on your own. But I had more to say. I needed to tell you that I got stabbed because my body moved on its own. You know, I always looked down on you because you were quirkless. You were supposed to be beneath me. I kept feeling like you were above me. I hated it. I couldn't bear to look at you. I couldn't accept the way you were. So I always kept you an arm's length and was mean to you. I tried to act all superior by rejecting you. But I kept losing that fight. Since we got into UA, nothing's worked out how I thought it would. Instead, this past year has forced me to understand my strength and my weakness. Now, I don't expect this to change anything between us, but I gotta speak to my truth. Zuku, I'm sorry for everything. There's nothing wrong with the path you've been walking down. Since inheriting one for all and falling all might lead, but now you're barely standing. Those ideals alone ain't going to get you over the wall you're facing. We're here to step in when you can't handle it all on your own. Because to live up to those ideals and surpass All Might, we gotta save you, the citizens at UA and the people on the streets. Because saving people is how we win. And that's um, Bakugo's big speech. And something to note there during that whole entire speech. We get a flash, we sort of get these tiny panels of when they're still talking to each other. And it's Izuku and Bakugo at kids. 
than in um, Bakugo, Midori, and middle school, than them in their high school uniforms and the UA uniforms, and then in their hero costumes as they are now. And I just have to point out, Midori's eyes look at the same blankless stare this whole entire time, but <clears throat> as it keeps going on, you see his pupil more and more, sort of that he's realizing it, is what I sort of figured out from that. And then, <clears throat> and then come back to the current, um, Deku's like, everyone has always been way ahead of me. And he starts to say, I said you all can keep up with me. I'm sorry I said something so awful. And then as he and as he starts to go down, Bako catches him and says, we get it. And we see the longing stares of everybody when Yagirozu walks up and starts talking with Koshako. With that, our first challenge is cleared. But the road ahead will be perilous. Machaka's like, yeah. And then we cut to nothing. It's pure darkness. And then um, somebody says, oh, he's waking up. 13, he's up. And we see 13 without her helmet on. From what I guess. The space hero, person from USJ. So, um, that's 13 if you, in case you forgot. And 13's there, and we see her without her helmet on, and we see her face. She's got a pretty interesting looking face. It, the hairstyle is really like Nagant's. I have to say, it is so very much like Nagant's. Just, I don't know how the color paletting works on this since these are black and white chapters, but it looks a lot like Nagant's. Um, but yeah, um, 13 says, ah, that's great. Can you hear me, Midoriya? At present, most civilians have moved into education shelters across the country. The majority of the holdouts are anti-hero um, protesters who form vigilante corps or violent pillagers, simply riding the wave of, of escaped convicts. Every day, more people grow wary of the anti-hero ideology and decide to move into shelters. Meanwhile, most of the violent radicals end up forming gangs that are easily enough to track down. The mass evacuation continues amidst the violence, and personnel are assigned to deal with the effort or the other. Everyone's doing their utmost to improve this situation. As far as you were brought up there, other heroes and police are able to take on that burden. And I just find it's funny, because it's sort of implied in a way that Deku's just been passed out this whole time since the stuff of Bakugo, and he just wakes up and 13 just drops all of the lore and info on him. But, um, something else in there. We see the UA barrier for the first time, and or a true UA barrier that Principal Nezu was alluding to in Chapter 319, I think. And it's this big, um, black-looking thing, and it stood up, and it's very fortified. I mean, it's the barrier. You can't tell me not. And, um, so Deku sort of looks up, and he's like, this? This is UA? And Sarah's like, the UA barrier is out in full force. And this giant wall is just the tip of the iceberg. And Hagakure says, you'll freak when you hear the deets about the system. They say you can combine with um, Shihetsu, Shiketsu or whatever. That's the school where, um, oh gosh, Shindo and somebody else, the turtle that girl came from. That was the big thing in the, um, what's it called? The hero license exam arc, and then they showed up with five muscular as that's people those school came from. And, um... Deku's like, of course, I want to honor Class A's feelings about all this, but, and Deku sort of looks, and, like, he's out of it, you can almost tell, he's like, no, I can't come back, and 13 sort of looks back and was like, huh? And, like, what's all that noise? And we see all the civilians inside the UA, and they say, don't let that boy take one step in the UA. They say Shigaraki's targeting some kid, and he's the one, isn't he? And we see President Mike with his microphone, he's like, Hey, hey, now, take a chill pill, folks. <laughs> and all of them are saying, um, Did you hear the principal's explanation? He guaranteed our safety no matter what. <laughs> what? And you're convinced by all that crap? We've been in our homes and came here because we thought we'd be safe. So what's that ticking time bomb doing here? And um, why's it got to be you, eh, huh? Let him hide someplace else. And while this um, is happening, you see Deku sort of looking into the people and start to walk away. Then Ochako gro grabs his hand and she's like, hey, it's okay. And then we see what Ochako's thinking and it's even them start linking this chain. Bakugo played his part too. 
We're not letting go of you now. We won't let you. Because when heroes need protecting, who will be there to protect them? Which is Hochako's whole philosophy since I forget when. So, and that's the chapter. So, uh, my thoughts on this chapter. Um, I very... My favorite part of the chapter is Kirishima's part to beginning. It is brilliant in my opinion. It's brilliant. It was funny. I liked it. And um, then we got some more like, hey, come back to UA with us. Then we got Bakugo's speech. I really like how Bakugo's speech went all went, went. I enjoyed it a lot. It shows sort of a lot of maturity for him. Um, and then we cut out and we see 13 and the UA bear and all of that. I still find it funny that Deku's passed out next thing you know. Oh yeah, here's all this info you need. <laughs> and I get it's sort of world building for us as readers, but still a bit interesting. And then the whole thing at the end with Ochako being like, who will be there to protect heroes when they need protecting? This is a Shonen Jump manga, what do we expect? Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on chapter 322. Um, Great Explosion Murder God Dynamite. Um, so thank you for watching this. Um, I hope you've been enjoying these reviews. And I'll be back next time with My Hero Academia Chapter 323. Full Plasma 231, out.